Look, I, we talk a lot about the lack of accountability um, writ large that has been seen for Donald Trump. But as Alicia just noted, there are some of the foot soldiers, some of the lieutenants, if you will, in Donald Trump's MAGA army who are seeing accountability. M Maya, is this, too, is an important piece. It is an important piece. And remember, we were talking about the court system earlier. This is the bar associations. We all have to have law licenses to practice. It's bar associations who, who decide whether or not we're working in accordance with those. And that includes an oath. Uh, and oh, it's very similar to the oath of office. Um, and this is one of the reasons why this matters. Trump attorneys are, again, making decisions that are in the benefit of Trump that has nothing to do with the law or the appropriate behavior of a lawyer. And it's because we have this kind of process where the bar associations themselves make the decisions about the accountability that we're seeing more of it. We saw it with Rudy Giuliani as well. But here's the thing. You know, this should shock us in the sense that so many of the lawyers engaged with Donald Trump are looking and facing down losing their bar licenses. This is unprecedented. There's nothing normal about it. Because, like, if you take 2021, where you had 1.5 million lawyers, 500 lost their law licenses, 500. This is a very small club. It is not a club mm. anyone wants to be a member of. And Donald Trump's legal teams are, like, outpacing everyone else. So that's, that raises for me, uh, Denver, a very interesting uh, point, because as Maya noted, you've got the lawyers for Donald Trump uh, getting caught up in his lies and, and being disbarred and otherwise uh, going to jail and having all these other legal problems. But I suspect from your work uh, on the January 6th committee, and my thinking would be there's got to be some some congressional folks who whose hands aren't necessarily clean in all of this. Um, what what can you say? Uh, what, what about that other side of that coin where the accountability, yeah, is out there for the lawyers? But I watched that whole thing unfold. I had listened to certain members. I know that there were some fingerprints in some places uh, just by what they were saying publicly. What, what say you to that side of it? You know, it gets me, you know, we talk about accountability, right, with these people whose moral compasses are broken um, and their lack of talent came to fore, which means they had to support Trump. Right. However, when you look at, you know, just the text messages alone, the roadmap of those 2,319 text messages is how many times these individuals like Sidney Powell uh, were invited to places like the Conservative Partnership Institute by Mike Lee to talk to senators and congressmen about the way forward. Mm -hmm. You know when that date was? That was between November 9th and November 23rd. Think about that before the election. Uh, you have all these congressional, over 30 of them, probably close to three dozen, right, that were actively involved back and forth, whether they were talking about how to strategize to overturn the election. The number of conspiracy theories and, frankly, boffo crap that came over the Meadows text are so insane that it's hard to get my arms around them. I called them the bourbon text because I had to have a drink after I read them. They're that nuts, right? And so, you know, that's the thing that we have is though when you have these congressional representatives that were pushing this or going to encrypted chats like Signal, think about Scott Perry saying, hey, Mark, we got to discuss this on Signal. Why? Mm. Why are you an elected representative going to encrypted chats, right, when you're talking about how to overturn the election? Now you have these individuals getting this part. You know what their one hope is? Their one hope is that Donald Trump gets reelected. Mm -hmm. That is their one hope. So I don't know, after three and a half years, are we really at that accountability stage? We got the 1,200 or so charging documents for those that actually raided the Capitol. But how about the actual people and the judgment that they had? Whether they broke the law or not doesn't mean that they're not idiots or that they weren't pushing really bad radicalizing stuff to the American mm -hmm. public based on a coordinated effort. And that's the stuff that makes me angry after all this time that we still haven't reached into how awful those text messages are and how awful some of the things they were saying on those text messages were also. Maya, I think you want to jump in, but I, I'll go ahead. Well, I, I mean, uh, the, the, obviously, this is all very important and true, the points that Denver is making. I also want to link it to why. Why do we have all these uh, smart, because many of them are very smart, electives who at one instance are saying, January 6th, this was horrible, this was violent, this should have never happened, and then very quickly shifting back to supporting, protecting Donald Trump. Not, not the Republican Party 
per se, but mm -hmm. Donald Trump. But it, we have to go back to the fact that the Supreme Court right now is talking about voting rights yet again and a gerrymandered district. We ha started seeing in 2010 efforts to control state houses to deny voters access to the polls, make it harder for people to vote. There is a reason why we have capture that has nothing to do with common sense of what our problems are and how we solve them together. And there is a root cause connected to saying people want to stay in power versus serve the people. And I think mm -hmm. we have to call that out right now because none of this is normal. None of this is about actually solving people's problems. And politics is supposed to be all about that, earning people's vote. We now have that conspiracy, deep, deep state conspiracy theory we're seeing. Heritage Foundation has a plan for how to create a deep state that will do the bidding of a President Donald Trump. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone, you hit search on the bottom right corner, you type in MSNBC, you click on the MSNBC app, you click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.